It is intriguing how the selfie taking capabilities of a phone have spurred a whole new lineup of devices across manufacturers. Now the Redmi Y2 is Xiaomi's all new phone in this selfie focused lineup and here's our review. The design language of the Redmi Y2 will be instantly identifiable to most. The phone is almost a mini me version of the Redmi Note 5. The Y2 is smart to look at and while it won't turn heads like the latest breed of Honor smartphones, it still is a premium looking device. The Redmi Y2 has a 5.99 inch IPS LCD display with an 18 is to 9 aspect ratio and the phone is larger than the Redmi Note 5 despite having a similar size screen. Within the prominent forehead, you'll find the front facing camera and an LED flash. There are no capacitive controls at the bottom since those have been replaced with on-screen keys. Now the glass front sits slightly proud of the metal frame that gives it a better grip. The volume rocker and power button are sufficiently clicky and very easy to reach. Meanwhile, the left side has a dual SIM card slot as well as a dedicated memory card slot. Something that really struck out to us was the Art Deco style antenna line design. At the bottom is a micro USB port. The back of the phone is still a classic Xiaomi design. The phone takes a lot of cues from the Redmi Note 5 Pro and centrally placed is a fingerprint scanner while at the top is the dual camera array set in a black module. There's an LED flash of course and the module sits proud of the frame. The Redmi Y2 continues to pack a Snapdragon 625 chipset paired with 3GB of RAM. There's really no denying the fact that this processor is getting long in the tooth and it reflects in the performance. The animation heavy interface puts a definite strain on the phone and we observed occasional lags while navigating the interface. The phone runs MIUI 9.5 based on Android 8.1 out of the box. There's a bunch of additional apps on board like Me Drop that lets you beam files between phones without requiring internet access. What's new is a full-fledged gesture mode. Launching it for the first time takes you through a brief tutorial that explains how it works. The gestures are very effective on a screen of this size and there's really no going back, but we noticed stutters and lags quite consistently. On occasion, the phone would not react to the gestures at all. Games like PUBG and Asphalt worked mostly fine, but even here it wasn't entirely uncommon to see a glitch or stutter. The phone also heats up quite a bit with intensive gaming. Now onto the display, the HD Plus screen is a bit soft but it gets the job done. Colors look punchy and brightness levels are just enough even outdoors. The Redmi Y2 is a selfie focused phone, so obviously the camera is a big draw for the target demographic. With a 16 megapixel front facing camera and a 12 megapixel rear camera, the phone impresses on paper. There's even a 5 megapixel secondary sensor that serves as a depth sensing module for portrait mode. Now let's be clear, portrait modes on entry to mid-range phones are not going to come anywhere near the results you get from something like a Pixel or an iPhone. That said, the Redmi Y2 displayed decent edge detection, though the aggressive bokeh effect creates a bit of a cardboard cutout effect. With a 16 megapixel front facing camera, the Redmi Y2 certainly captures detailed shots. Then there's a whole host of beauty modes that kick things up a notch. From skin tone adjustments to even changing the size of your eyes, it is crazy what you can do with the photographs. Portrait mode in the front camera isn't all that great, but Xiaomi is investing quite a bit in machine learning, so hopefully this should improve over time. In well-lit conditions, the camera generally takes pretty decent shots. There remains a bit of noise, but generally the 12 megapixel camera module captures a lot of details, but the metering tends to be slightly on the warmer side. Nighttime shots though are high on noise and low on details. Clearly, the Redmi Y2 provides a lot of value, but we feel that it needs a little more performance optimization. On a camera front, it caters well to the selfie-loving crowd. If you're not that audience though, the Redmi Note 5 generally performs a little better despite the same internals. Unless you specifically need a high-resolution front-facing camera, we'd highly recommend spending a little more and going in for the Redmi Note 5, or better still, the Redmi Note 5 Pro. Thanks for watching.